Hello and welcome to Jardin du Mayfair, heaven on earth for the watch enthusiast. Or this week it could be called Shred City because I am sitting here with James Exton, J-E-L-D-N-M. I'll tag him all in the Instagram. Hey, welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. What so a pleasant much. invite, you know, and an intro. I don't know how to take it. I'll take it as a compliment. Troll me if you want. It's fine. <laughs> Man, welcome. It's so Thank lovely you. to have you here. Um, James is here. He's a fitness influencer. He's into watches, cars and all things lifestyle. He's very, very popular on Instagram and YouTube. And he's here to talk to us today a little bit about watches and more importantly, about life itself. We're going to dive into some questions. James has picked out some watches that he's going to show uh, us and talk to us about. Uh, they're from our stock. So they're things that have jumped out of him. So we'll get to those at the end. But first, let's jump into a few little questions if we can. So it's absolutely a delight to have you here, James. Um, you are the chiseled co-owner of LDN Muscle yeah. and your twin brother, TGE, who's Tom, and we've had him on the channel. If you want to check that video out, guys. Um, so without further ado, let the grilling commence. <laughs> I don't know what I'm in store for, to be honest. So you started out by qualifying to become a barrister and then you took a 180 degree career change to focus on health and fitness, which yep. must have taken a lot of hard work as the market is so competitive. Can you tell us a little bit more about the business? Yeah, 100 percent. So like you said, started in law, always had a kind of health and fitness background. Um, so I was interested in, but not from a commercial sense, more just for my own personal benefit and my health for obvious reasons. Um, and then money kind of was a, obviously a, a topic or something that i wanted to pursue um i did the criminal bar so i specialized in defending people yeah. um and there wasn't much money in it right and fitness started to become more and more of a passion saw a big sort of gap in the market and we're going back a few years now yeah. a different market to it is now yeah. and i thought let's make some cash out of this nice yeah. yeah so you were one of the first to sort of see yeah. that weren't you? Yeah, yeah and that was back when digital fitness was a kind of a weird thing people thought well, why am i looking at a program on a iPad or a yeah. phone, why is someone not telling me what to do? And that was, I know now it sounds bizarre, but at the time that was kind of an epiphany. Yeah. Um, so I mean, you... it was Word documents at the time as well. Yeah, that's what I was going <laughs> to say. One pound ninety nine of your <laughs> finest. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. So basically like people were training in the gym they were doing like sessions that sort of started at a time that they had to get there for then they would be late or whatever yeah. and then you sort of realize that everyone's got a phone or a screen in their pocket or yeah. an ipad and they can do all of their fitness through yeah let's mobilize it yeah let's take it online lovely lovely amazing so you're obviously a watch lover. We've had a look through your page and we've clocked quite a few on your Instagram. Yep. Um, the cars, the collector gene clearly runs in the family. Yep. So is your method of collecting to buy things for milestones and achievements or do you literally just buy what you like when you like it? Really good question. So the whole, I mean, cars and watches are very similar in terms of my mindset and approach to them. When we first started out, cars were definitely a milestone. In my head, it was, I want a supercar. And that to me would signify, yes, it's going to be enjoyable to drive, but that's a milestone I need to hit and I want to do it by a certain age. And so it was more than just a piece of metal or more than just the value of it or more just the enjoyment of driving it. It was like, if I can hit this, I've made a real fulfilling move in life. Yeah. Uh, and the same with watches as well. And then as time went on, there was always a thought process behind that that I never bought recklessly. So even when I hit that milestone, it wasn't all oh, hit a milestone and lose 100 grand on the car. Because to me, that was kind of counterproductive. I've tried so hard to make enough money to hit that threshold. I don't want to go and throw it in the bin. Yeah. And because you go on that journey to earn the money, you know what the value of money is on route. So when you buy that piece of metal, you know what that's taken. Genuine blood, sweat and tears and fisty cuffs probably to get there. <laughs> so yeah, the thought was very much about making like a rational decision, looking at the market. Same as I do with anything yeah. I buy and the same as my twin brother. So yes, there's always a short list of cars that you want. And then you chip down on that and go, right, what's the residual value of that? Yes, we don't have a crystal ball, but is that going to take a nosedive? Yeah. I'm not going to buy a Bentley brand new, probably. But, or if I buy it secondhand, how long can I keep before before I'm starting to get into sticky territory? So, yeah, yeah very much a milestone, but always a calculated decision. Yeah. yeah. It's fascinating that you say that about the residual aspect of it, because, I mean, I'm, I'm obsessed with cars. I love them, but I don't buy loads of them. But uh, often our clients, certainly a lot of our VIPs, they say they lose all their money on cars and then they make it back on yeah, watches. Yeah, yeah, split it across the surface. <laughs> yes. As long as net, you're up, it's all right. Right? Yeah, still not exactly. a nice feeling, but yeah. Yeah, good. So um, do you mind me asking you what your first big watch purchase was and do you still have it? Yeah, so I actually, I say big, to your audience, this is probably really, really small. No, so when, oh, sorry, I should have I should have said, but when I say big, I don't actually mean in value. I just mean like the first oh, thing. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have to be, it's just whatever, really. But the first time that you sort of, you thought, wow, this is like, I'm, I'm going to get yeah. this thing. 
Okay, so my my first watch purchase, I think that has actually in a nice way as well the most value to me. Um, I bought after my this is this is not supposed to be sad by the way. I bought after my father passed away, but my brother helped me source a Rolex from his birth year, okay. and I thought that was kind of didn't know what to do like a jewelry, didn't want to go and get a tattoo of dad on my neck. That wasn't my thing, so I was like, I want to buy something that's an heirloom for the yeah, family yeah, yeah, for yeah. going forward. So I bought a Rolex from his birth year, really vintage. Don't worry, my dad's not 14. So, yeah, I bought an old school Rolex, but I think it was about 1650 I was under two grand, I think. So we're not talking like a big purchase, but for yeah. me, and to still have that now on an old crocodile strap, solid case back, it was just it's just cool. Yeah. And my brother helped me source that. I don't, I'm really awful. I don't know the model. But no, no, no. for me, that was my first kind of, and it was nice to coincide the Rolex, but with the emotion attached to it yeah. and have a real story behind it. Yeah, of course. Um, and it's not something I wear. It's just something that I foresee myself. I don't have kids now, but when I do have kids, that they will have it and, you know, been told not to sell it at any point irrespective yeah. of the value and i'm sure it's probably not going to appreciate massively it'll yeah. be worth more than i paid for it but yeah that was the first kind of forage which ticked both boxes it's lovely it's lovely my my first watch that i bought um i bought a 116710 ln which is the ceramic gmt master 2 yep. i was working as an estate agent at the time and i got my first ever like bonus for selling like a big property yep. or something and uh, i was so excited to get it when i went and bought it i spent like the first three nights like lying in bed not even joking so sad i was like lying in bed just literally looking at it all the time I, like, I know i was so when obsessed. you burnt it yeah have such a thing and, and actually my next watch after that was again nothing big by comparison but for me and i don't know why they stood out but it was something i really really loved at the time and i still love it now yeah i'm gonna get the model wrong as well but i think it's a br0392 ben and ross okay yeah i know i know just black watch. black yeah, with yeah. the white markers yeah. on rubber and oh, i was like lot. loved it and my brother had the stainless one on the velcro strap it's like a sports yeah. strap yeah yeah Mate, and like even to this day though, and I think it's probably because what it you know means to me in terms of it was at a stage of my life when I was a lot younger and it was a first kind of stepping stone. Yeah. Even now, I love that watch and it's cooler. Of course, of course. And um, you know, and it's I guess it's less high risk now as well. It's a little bit more chill if yeah. you if you wear it. So well, that's the thing when there's emotion in it as well. It's so beautiful because like I've always said to myself. So I regretted selling my GMT Master, but at the time, what it was is every time I wanted a new watch, I couldn't afford to just buy another one. So I was always yeah, trading one, upwards, one up. trading upwards. Yeah. And then I've always said to myself, like, if I hit the big time, I'm going to buy a stickered 11671. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to peel them all off yeah, myself yeah, and yeah. just keep it. Yeah, yeah. Um, because they're, they're, that's the thing with the watches. It doesn't necessarily mean the value or anything. It's about emotion. And, and I think you so go lovely. through a journey where you go on that value hunting where you're like, next thing needs to be gold or rose or yeah. whatever. And I need, to, I need to, you know, hit these markers. Yeah. And then you kind of go full circle, a bit like the car stuff as well. Yeah. I know we spoke off camera about cars, but it's the same. You go through that journey and you go, right, what's next, Lambo? Right, what's next, 488? Right, Aventador SV. <laughs> and it's like a pyramid. And you get and you start getting, it gets silly. And then you get to the point where like, did I get more enjoyment because it was more or can yeah. I come back down the pyramid now yeah. and find that nice happy place where it's like not as stressful, just as enjoyable, yeah. has a meaning to it yeah. and isn't just for the sake of having it. And I'm back at that point in my life, maybe I'm getting old, yeah. but you know where you get to a point of meaningfulness and you're like, okay, that's the sweet spot for me of true genuine enjoyment from it coupled yeah. with good value and you know a good residual as well yeah yeah so my first ever proper car was an aston martin db9 sick i bought it in midnight blue with the cream interior and i actually drove it every single day like yep. i drove it to the shops i drove it i was driving around in a tracksuit in it and everything i didn't care because i was like i've paid for this i'm gonna drive it and everyone was saying yeah you shouldn't do that like the thing do you know what that's the funny thing is i only kept it for like two years but yeah. i drove it every single yeah, day yeah, in the work. rain snow everything and at, at the end i thought to myself do you know what? I didn't care. I was so happy that I got my money's worth yeah, back because yeah. I really used the yeah, thing. Exactly. You know what I mean? And fundamentally, that car's now cool. That's gone full circle. Yeah, you'd happily get yeah. one in now and oh, be like, "It's cool, right?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you seem to be a fan of sports pieces, and you have a bit of a preference to AP and Rolex, mm. um, as well as training hard as nails in G-Shocks. If you had to stick <laughs> for one brand for life, so if you had to stay on only one brand for life, yeah. a horrible question. It is a very it's a horrible question. question but um, which would it be? Do you think? That's a good question. I think I think you hit the nail on the head. As time's gone on, I've always been a bit of a sucker for a rubber mm. rubber strap. Mm. And do you know what I haven't ticked? is a Patek on rubber. Ah, oh, nice, yeah. And I think that that would be where it would be at. So I'm going to say Patek, and I just think 
because I haven't scr scratched the itch. Yeah, so you could go through a whole range there. Yeah, well. and I've got I've got a lot of itches to scratch on that yeah. front. And yeah. also, I think I'd be just happy resting with like an Aquanaut or something like that on yeah. rubber. So, yeah, I think that's where I'd be. Good. I love your answer because I want to normalise people actually wearing Pateks to do what they're supposed to do. Like the Aquanaut yeah. is such a sports yeah, watch. Like, brown, brown, yeah, brown. killer. Yeah, Amazing piece. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Great answer. Thank you so much. So, do you like a G Shot though, mate? Yeah, I know you do. I thought I was going to be thrown out for that. But... No, <laughs> your, your brother was saying the same as well. <laughs> yeah, it did. It just it ticks the box on the, yeah. you know on the commute you know and they're amazing they're amazing that's the thing I haven't broken it yet either, which is good yeah I also want to see this new moon swatch uh, they've got a yeah. new Snoopy one uh, and I want to see that too because I think they're really comfortable but they can't get wet I don't think so uh, rubbish no good Cancel for you it. not good for the UK weather exactly so a uh, fantasy C scenario you've just bought your Grail car what is it and which watch would you wear to drive it oh that is these questions are good, aren't they? It's like <laughs> yes, getting so punched much. in the side of the head a lot of work and having goes to think on the spot. A lot of work goes Yeah, I think, do you know what? And I'm, I'm not just living in his coattails. I would say, because both of us loved them when we were younger and he's gone and bought one, Carrera GT. Because it's just one of those cars when you grew up, you knew it was cool. Of course. And again, I can't escape residuals and investment pieces. So I think Carrera GT or... F40, I put them both in the same, Ferrari F40, put them both in the same category. Lovely. You've asked for one car, so I've missed no, the question. No. Um, and then the watch would have to coincide with that because I would want it to kind of look like it's in situ and mm -hmm. matching because I'm a bit of an idiot like that. So yeah. I think it needs, I, th I think the, I think the Aqua, yeah, I think the Aqua not on a, on a brown rubber strap with a brown tan interior and a Carrera GT oh. might bring back the noodles on the head as well, yeah, just yeah. to really ruffle people's yeah. feathers. Yeah, yeah. I think that'd be quite an aggressive situation. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the key word that aggressive. Yeah. And Obnoxious. I've... I've got one I can do for your F40. So um, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm visioning the F40 is going to be in red. That's so good. in that case, then it, it we'll pull up an image. But the Singapore edition of the Aquanaut comes on a red strap and Unreal. it will go with your F40. Unreal. Nice. There yes. we go. We'll, we'll pull up an image. Um, OK, fantastic. These are great answers. Thank you so much. Um, so you're obviously someone who looks after your body. You take a lot of time and dedication and you've worked successfully, clearly, with a range of clients from people who want to bulk up to people who want to slim down you're working on tackling obesity and that's a huge and amazing thing that you're doing so congratulations to you the transformations that we've seen on your page look incredible so what's the single best advice that you would give to someone who was looking to get in shape self-belief first and foremost that. because most people you know they drop at the first hurdle which is them themselves mm. uh, and they look to external factors to blame but actually if you just look at yourself and go right is there any barrier for me to exercise? Most people have maybe an Ill illness or an injury, but it's not a complete wall or barrier. Yeah. It's just a small hurdle. Everyone can do it. And then it's the self-belief that's prohibiting that first step. And I know it sounds cliche, but once you've taken that first step, yeah. like I had a guy starting this morning and he's like, I've done the first workout. And all I was saying to him, look, don't worry if you do all of them this week, just get the first one done. Because I guarantee you, once you've done the first one, you're going to tell me you feel good. Yeah. And once you feel good, you're going to say, I want to go again. Yeah. And then we're in that nice cyclical process. So it's actually a lot simpler than people think as well. And actually, even if you go in and just turn up at the gym or if it's a home gym, whatever, even if you don't do the whole thing, you haven't failed because you succeeded because you started yeah. and it's a starting it's a bit like i don't know homework at school or dissertation or something yeah. at uni where you look at and the self-belief is like, i can't do this it's too much and then you get into a point where you go actually just just need to put pen to paper i might only do a paragraph tonight but i'll sleep better knowing that i've started the process and once that's started the rest is actually relatively easy yeah, yeah. um and then the other side of it is obviously tough love look you know if you want to live a long life and see lots of things in your life it's a non-negotiable, right? Yeah, you got. You will drop dead. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And I don't want to be brutal about no, it, no, no, but no. and more responsible. The more responsibilities you have in your life, then you can start to be a little bit more aggressive with the way in which you tell people. Is actually right. Forget just your own benefit. This is now selfish. Yeah, you're now being selfish. You're now implementing. You can't do things with your kids, or you're now going to potentially not see their graduation because you could drop dead from a heart attack. Yeah. And once you start putting it into black and white for people. Not nice to hear, but sometimes you have to have that re realization. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the transformations I've seen on your page are just incredible, and it must be so rewarding to see people changing yeah. like that. So I've been on the fitness thing properly for about a year now. Yeah. And interestingly enough, since I've started doing it properly, yeah. um, my life, my career, everything has just rocketed, yes. you know, yeah, and yeah. it's like uh, that can't be coincidence. No, it's not. You know, the and way I feel. You know, like when you speak to people and you speak to people, no doubt, in, in loads of different demographics and high net worth, when you try and work out someone that you meet that's genuinely happy with life, you would normally say they tick a lot of boxes. And one of the boxes are they're happy with the way they look. And I think as men, we're ashamed sometimes to put the vein hand up and say, actually, do you know what? I do care how I look. Yeah. 
Like, women are happy to say, oh, I want to put makeup on or go out in the house, but blokes were like, no, I don't really care. But if you took someone aside and said, right, this is off the grid, yeah. are you sure you don't care? Yeah. No, no disrespect. If you don't care, cool, happy yeah. days. But most blokes care and it affects their confidence. And then it kind of rattles their enjoyment of life. Yeah. And then even like going into a job interview, if you walk into a job interview and you feel good in your clothes and you look good, I promise you the energy you're going to give out in the interview is different to going in, sat there all timid, looking, feeling a bit self-conscious. Yeah. You're not going to conduct yourself in the same way. You're not yeah. going to hold yourself in good esteem. It just changes your life, doesn't it? And it changes yeah. your whole outlook on everything. Yeah. And your energy levels lift, your mood lifts, your preferences in life, your lifestyle choices, the things you now enjoy. It just takes you into a different kind of lane. Mm. I know that sounds cliche. And you know what? What's really interesting? I do, you know, me and my twin brother do a lot of mentorship and consultancy, some business, some more life. Mm. A lot of my high net worth clients are coming to me and they've got these all of these mm -hmm. they've got all the cars and more yeah they've got the family they've got the children they've got the house they've got the yacht they've got the boat they've got the helicopter they've got it all yeah yeah so to most people from the outside they're looking at that person going oh mate like that's sick you've won they're talking to me that it's not sick yeah. and they're saying they're not happy yeah, yeah, yeah and when you look at it i would say the common trend amongst most of those men is they don't get up in the morning and even for a second like the way they look mm -hmm. so they can't even get they can get in the car, yeah. but the first hurdle in the morning is they don't even want to see themselves in the mirror. Cause yeah. and, and that starts the day on the back foot, so they're now deeply unhappy. Yeah. And that, and that sounds so pathetic, but what's the beauty of that? Well, the cars and watches the helicopter might not be obtainable for all of us, nor do they need to be, because yeah. you could start with something that's pretty much free and tick that happiness box straight away. Yeah. And, and that's the cheat code for life. Mm. And it takes either a health scare or getting to that point and putting your hand up saying, do you know what, I want to speak to someone because I'm not happy. To then realise what is that hierarchy? Because we think the hierarchy, like you say, is the DB9, the GMT, and what yeah, have yeah. you. And yes, there is a satisfaction, but the fulfilment is the milestone, mm. not the piece of metal no. necessarily, or not yeah. necessarily the hands and the markers and the dial and whatever. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, of course. And when I think people look at it from a more holistic perspective, ultimately they're in a better place. Yeah, yeah. If anyone's interested in you know changing their life at all, then we'll link all of James's uh, socials and everything so you can Appreciate find it. him and uh, talk to him about it. Um, so then if anyone was looking to buy their first watch, yeah. what would you think would be a good first watch? So, you know, I don't know, let's, let, let's use a criteria of like 16 years old. They're just getting into them. Okay. They're thinking about yeah. what should be first. I would say if you're that age and you're buying a watch, you've got to go in like you would with anything with an investment hat on. You're going to probably be spending a large amount of the money or the savings that you have worked hard to get. Yeah. So you don't really want to start your journey on the back foot, sinking it, shredding that money. And then, like you say, you want to be in a position where you don't necessarily have to trade up or you can take a bit of equity out or something and go again. Yeah. I, like My mind says go in the, the lower end of the Tudor kind of type journey. Yeah subject to it being a model that isn't going to hemorrhage but i don't think it's necessarily going to hemorrhage it might not be worth exactly what you paid for it but you're never going to end up looking at like something that's worth 10 percent of what you paid for it yeah but i think it takes a lot of boxes and maybe doesn't get you the unwanted attention that a 16 might be an issue yeah yeah more yeah. likely to be an issue yeah so something that lower brown or something on the very baseline end of rolex yeah so it's fascinating that you say that so one of the main questions this is why i asked this question so one of the main questions i get on instagram tends to be from people sort of 16 to 18 maybe 18 to 20 let's say yeah. they're just sort of starting out they've got a job they've made some savings or their mum and dad are giving them some money and they always say oh which watch shall i buy and it's weird because I don't know what these sort of young people are doing these days or how they've got so much money in the first place. Yeah. And I was young, I had no money ever. No, 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 no. <laughs> Even this would have been a myth. They're so switched on now, I guess they, they know what they're doing and they're making money, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I always recommend Tudor. Uh, and it's a weird one because you're, you're very business minded and you, you, know, you think about the loss. Whereas actually I think to myself, when they say to me, I've got 15 grand, what shall I buy? I think to myself like, well, when you're that age, maybe just start with something like a Tudor, see yeah. how you go. So yeah. Tudor GMT was one of the first Tudors I got, and it was like bulletproof, this watch. Yeah. It could take anything, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's so much watch for the money. Um, and then obviously, you know, as you go down, you start crossing the line, and then you realise which Rolex you want by wearing that for yes. a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And sort of not jumping straight in the deep end, because uh, that's the thing about us here at Official Watches. We're not all about the money, you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. we don't need to be all these watches. We've got from Tudors to flying tourbillon. Yes. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. We've got it all. So... Um, um, we can we can give the proper advice, yeah. you know, which is what I like about the business. Um, so please, yeah. Talking about what watch to buy at sixteen. Yeah. So, and I keep banging on about G Shock, and I'm not I'm not getting paid by them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully soon. <laughs> that, that's the idea. No, I'm joking. Me and my brother, I remember. So 
as twins, we were competitive and what have you, and we were always taught the value of money. Like, you work, if you earn it, you can spend it. And um, But because we'd worked to earn it and spend it, we wouldn't waste it. And we went to, do you, do you know the cash and carry? I don't know if it's still going. Macro? Is it called Macro? I don't uh, know. Yeah, Anyone know? I remember. Yeah, it's a big cash and carry. It's like Costco. It probably <laughs> is now Costco. I don't know. Whatever. And mum, like, dragging us around, us beating the crap out of each other in the supermarket. <laughs> but I remember us both looking at the jewellery kind of section and yeah. like, things that are glistening. And in there were two G-Shocks. It was this kind of, like, greeny kind of looking thing that was sort of sort of see-through plastic similar to what they still do now and then another one that had like an altitude meter and like all the stuff you don't need yeah yeah, yeah. that hiking like Ray Mears type Bear of Grylls course. watch yeah. and my brother was like I want that and I think it was about 180 quid and I was like I want the green thing it was tacky but I love it and like it's aggressive and we were like yeah we could smash him into trees and I'll be fine Yeah. but that was all like to us at that age, I think we must have been probably uh, like very early teens, like 30, 12, 13. But now we're like 180 quid for a watch. Like, wild. And perspective changed yeah. over years. Mate, it was the best thing we ever did. We saved up, bought it. We still have them today. No, to this day, no, his was on leather. He's never been up a mountain on it. Mine, I like, crashed a motorbike into a tree. It loves it. Yeah, it you yeah, cannot yeah. break yeah. it. And that piece of plastic to me now is like, I still love that watch. And if if he if I asked him now, he'd be like, yeah, mate, sick. Like, it's got yeah. well, all the things. And and although perspective changes, I still put that on now and be buzzing. Yeah. So any people who watch the channel will already know I've got a massive affinity to G-Shock. Yeah. That is actually what started it all for me. So yeah. uh, I'm showing my age here, but I was at school when Baby G came out. Oh, wow, yeah. Everyone was God. obsessed with Baby yeah. G and you had to Bottom go. in the middle. Yeah, and I wanted the baby blue and I had the white and, you know, the summer, yeah. the summer with the white shorts and T-shirt yeah. going into school. Really? Like I, say. I felt amazing. Amazing. They should bring it back, and yeah. uh, I, I know the feeling. And that's the thing is, it's so funny because like never in a million years would I think I'd be sitting here, you know, talking yeah. about these kind of things. Yeah. But it's just like it doesn't matter. The journey is the journey, and yeah. you know, if uh, you're 16, get what you what yeah. do you like? Don't be morphed by social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, if you're sitting down and trying to create a portfolio and make money, fine. Yeah, yeah. But if not, if you like a G Shop, buy a G Shop, mate, yeah, yeah, and yeah. keep the cash, and then yeah. do something else with it. If you buy like. what you love. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, great advice. So you travel quite a lot. Which three watches would you put in a watch roll to cover a few months overseas? I would say Rose Gold Daytona on Oyster Flex. Nice. Yeah. Love. I'm a rose man. I like rose, love gold. rose gold. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know where it came from. And, <laughs> and people that have followed me or may have followed me for a while, I've got rose gold caps for my teeth. But I've got a problem. <laughs> And I went, I went to get my teeth done. Um, I didn't wear it today. I didn't think it was appropriate. But I should have because it would have matched. <laughs> but I've got rose gold caps for my teeth. I went there and they were, sort, they were like... Well, we do, we do do rose, but you sure don't want yellow? I was like, I don't want yellow. What do you not understand about this? I like rose gold. Yeah. And they were like, well, why? And I was like, well, don't ask me. I'm the customer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like with a tan, for me, rose gold is the one. Yeah. And, and it's because not a lot of people I know and watches is different, but... I like the fact that not as many people like Rose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, sign fine. me up. I mean, yeah, listen, whatever you like, that's the whole point. They're just like clothes. That's what I always say to our clients, you know, because we've got clients that they, they've been very fortunate positions in life. They can essentially have whatever yeah, they want, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they still want the advice, right? And yeah. they're just like, oh, what should go next in my box? And I, I, you know, if I spot like a load of yellow and white gold or stainless steel, and I'll say like, oh, you haven't got anything rose in there. And they'll yeah. be like, oh, well, let, and I'm like, just come try one on. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then yeah. nine times out of 10, they'll leave with one because, yeah. you know, it's like, you just need to get these things on your wrist. Yeah. And obviously the tan is the killer. It's yeah, that's the thing. Saint Tropez. Yeah, rose. Rose. Rat, <laughs> like fake tanning around the watch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all rest of the arm. Don't pull my sleeve up. So yeah, ro uh, a rose gold rose. Rolex. We got one. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think I'd just go for something that's just like run of the mill, like a Hulk or something just stainless. Hulk is a great like shout. just a beater. Yeah, I know it's not yeah. a beater, but you know, no, what I mean, just like just a daily, yeah. like a nice bit. You can of kit. take anything. You yeah, throw it at the Hulk. And then I think oh, there would have to be something super aggressive as well, mm -hmm. just to really ruffle feathers. Nice. Um, so I'm thinking. I don't know, Rainbow Daytona, something like that. Yes. Just something that's like obnoxious. <laughs> okay. That's just reserved for like when there's just a real competition of risks and everyone's that. doing that, and, you know, <laughs> trying to get in each other's face. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think something for like daytime activity, rose on rubber, something for just stainless where you're kind of like, that's fine. Yeah. In my head, I'm playing tennis wearing it. Yeah, yeah. Don't even play tennis, but that's where I'm at. Yeah. And then uh, I used to actually, <laughs> bloody good I was. And uh, until my brother beat me up with a racket. And then, um, and then yeah, something punchy, just just yeah. like where I'm not even sure I like the watch myself, yeah. but I like the fact that it's annoying people. Yes, right. So I'm so glad you mentioned the Rainbow Daytona. So basically, when I first was fortunate enough to get into this position where yeah. I can essentially, you know, wear whatever I like, yeah. and I would always go to first big meetings in a Rainbow Daytona. <laughs> think, right. Yeah. Well, like, I've arrived. Get their attention. And it's like, oh, he's, he, he, he's the watch guy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like... um. 
a one piece of advice that was given to me by someone very dear to me who's been mentoring me and, and teaching me about life in general uh, is he said to me that watchers open doors. Yes. And yeah. it's so true because the amount of conversations I've had with some big clients who I've met out and about and you know, about watchers and things, and they've seen the Instagram page or YouTube yeah. or whatever it is that they're watching us on. Um, you know, it's true. Watchers open doors. You know, you can, Definitely. the conversations you can strike up, you never know who you're going to meet. Yeah, I agree. And the same with the car world. When we first got into the car world at sort of a certain level, it was very much about going to a car meet. It was, it was nice, like-minded individuals, but the conversations and the nature of the conversations, it took us from a lifestyle of mixing with people that probably didn't offer society a huge amount and we probably offered society less than we definitely do now yeah but just by being in that lane of like aspiration and even if you don't have a car but going to those meets and being around people that are successful mm -hmm. and got a good mindset and and aspirational because that's what they've achieved and i know it's a piece of metal but there's a there's something behind it often for these people a story a journey and some yeah. some intellect so yeah i agree it opens doors 100 percent. yeah amazing. and it, and it's a trust building thing as well if you rock up in a watch you don't have to get to know that person straight away. There's almost like a, a, a non-verbalized conversation where someone goes, okay, I see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trusting this guy. I'm going to have a conversation with him. Yeah, absolutely. Like straight away because, you know, and same, you know, if I'm in one of my nicer cars and I meet someone in it, I don't, there's no guard up where people don't, people are more open to talk. Yeah. Because they feel like, okay, I trust this guy because, you know, whether rightly or wrongly, I'm not going to tell you where I live. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can have an open conversation around yeah. things, all things business of and life. Of course, yeah. of course, yeah. I wore a, a, a Nautilus 3710, which I believe we have here. We do. Um, I wore this to a Watch Pro event. Yeah. I uh, had security guards and everything with me, and we went down there and we did some filming. And I wore this to a Watch Pro event, and um, some people came up to me and they just went, how'd you get that? Yeah. And it's like, ah, well, actually, Funny it's for that. sale. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Everything's yeah, yeah. for sale. You know, that's the that's yeah. the one thing is I'm like a walking advert. Yeah. So I'm never wearing anything that isn't for sale, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's and it's just interesting how you get talking to people. Why well, you had eight watches when I arrived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So I did it to your brother. I was trying to get him to buy everything. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good news to be there. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Um, so, if you were going down the his and hers route with your partner, Ella May, which duo would you go for? I thought about this, and I hope she's not watching this, because hold your horses. <laughs> <laughs> Steady on. He's going to cost you yeah. a lot. <laughs> um, I think Royal, uh, Royal Oak, Yeah. stainless, white dial, 37 mil for her. Yes. And then the men's size for me, because I think 37. I've got skinny wrists, but I, I'd like something, you know. Do you know what? They're great ego yours. comes into it, need a bigger one than of her. Of course you do. So but listen. I think they match. They match so nicely and it's such a clean set. So her one would be the 15450 right. with the silver white dial. Yep. Some people call it silver, some people call it white. I love that watch. Yeah. I think it's killer. 37 mil, going to look great on her. And then obviously you get the daddy, which yes. is the 15400. Yep. Or you could even go 15500. But either way, it wouldn't matter because the truth is you're going to pull it off nicely and both of you, you'll look great. In yeah. So that's a very, I feel like very it's, good under, it's not too in your face. It's understatedly in your face <laughs> so an, an interesting thing about the royal oak is that everybody goes nuts for the blue dial okay yeah. and the blue dial is nice there's yeah. no denying it but i think the sleeper is the white dial it always has been yeah. and it's literally like it's 10k totally. less yeah. on most examples yeah. because basically ap do this thing called boutique blue so you can't get them in every shop you can only get them right. in ap boutique which is obviously way harder to buy watches from so yes they hold probably better value but at the same time i've always been a fan of the yeah. white and i think you can save yourself some money there because yeah. it's just such a nice not money is it burning save yeah. <laughs> yeah there you go yeah so we'll get them packaged up nice yeah, yeah, Check yeah. out on the way out. Yeah, give me the best finance rate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the last one to close our fantastic interview, which I've been thoroughly enjoying, is James. What is next for you? Next move, business-wise. Next car. Next watch. Yeah. What have you? What have you got going on? Yeah, so I'm at a stage where I'm across loads of different things at the moment. I think the business consultancy, mentorship, and and ultimately. I'm going to call it life coaching, which has evolved into just through the way in which I've been kind of navigating with clients. And that's kind of what people want and need. Yeah. That's going to take a massive expansion with Tom, my twin, just because there's so much demand for it and really start to look at how we can incorporate that on a bigger scale. Yeah. So helping more people, but also in a community spirit. So having a load of different, ultimately a lot of them are men in the same environment, able to kind of benefit from each other's company, but also bring together our skill and expertise to kind of service that. Car-wise, real crossroads. Market's a bit odd at the moment. Yeah. Loving the GT3 and not got a desire to jump out of it. It's ticking the sports car, supercar box for me. Yes. And Range Rover's just, like, I'm 
just honestly I could cry I love that far so much I've seen it and I love it yeah man I don't I actually sleep in it mate yeah. I love it yeah, yeah. I'm so emotionally attached to that car yeah. I get in it I, if I just if, you know if I woke up and I felt like a I'm 100 miles an hour, but if I felt 98 miles an hour, I'd go and sit in the car seat, come out 100 miles an hour. I love yeah, it. Yeah. So, so car wise, there's nothing burning or, or really looking at. And I dare I say, I want to go into, I think I want to go into the classic market and get something classical. Okay. Like an older Porsche Turbo 996 Turbo, not yeah. completely classic, enough modernization that it won't blow up. Yeah. yeah so I think yeah. something like that, rather than going trying to go back down to something like really modern supercar wise. Yeah. Uh, and watch wise, whatever looks like a good investment mm. and I always put that on my brother's stressful shoulders because yeah. he's done me well with some good yeah, advice before he has, yeah. and we bought some stuff together and jumped out of it together yeah. and flipped it so I say flipped it as in like not a new watch a watch that we bought and on good advice and sold and yeah, he's yeah. always got that right and yeah. I know he, he educates other people and that for, so I think invest, investment pieces for watches are, as you know I don't in London I'm not really um, wearing them around as much so at all in fact if you're going to rob me I don't wear watches <laughs> at all yeah yeah Okay. Store of value. Yeah, store of value, just investment pieces. So the thing is this, right, is like I always hear you guys talking about the cars and talking about the values and stuff like that, and I, I totally get it. The market, I think, is quite similar in the sense that just everything is down, right? Yeah. Like luxury is down. So yes. the watches are down 30%. It's the single best time to buy a watch in three years. Yes. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of them, especially like sort of um, rose gold, the Daytona and stuff like that, they're coming very close to their list price. Yeah. Now, that is a fantastic place for us to be. It's a common misconception that we enjoy the really high price prices but we don't because it's a much more fun conversation to have with a yeah. client like if you can skip a five year sort of non-existent queue yeah. for four or five grand yeah it really does make sense yeah, course, you just yeah, get yeah. the watch you want and obviously my clients now they're getting younger and younger and the way that they shop is they don't want to wait even a month no, for no, a no, watch. Like, like yeah, like if they decide on a Monday, it's like, can I pick it up on Wednesday? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then three months later, they're like, oh, that was fun. Have you got the green one? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. they, they don't, Transitory. they're not yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, Different they're not in the same set. realm now. They, they want to change them so quickly, which I should imagine is probably happening similarly with cars. So people are just like maybe leasing or yeah. whatever. So you can yeah. swap more yeah, yeah. often. So you don't have to like keep it forever or lose all the money on it. And I think that's the interesting thing about watches is like you can actually, if you if you buy smart, you can swap around. Do yeah. you know what I mean? You don't yeah. have to be stuck to one no, watch. No, no, you know, exactly. it's a romantic thing to think that you might be, but two years, three years later, you get a bit bored. Yeah, get another one. And yeah. I think I think you've hit the nail on the head, especially with content creation. Obviously, a lot of people that are buying these watches that are younger and younger, chances are they're in some kind of content creation world. Yeah. And therefore, arguably, their audience is bored if they keep. The same thing too long interesting and so you almost got kind of like not an obligation but you want to continue to make content you want to make it interesting yeah. there's only so many times you can utilize that tool that car that watch that piece of metal whatever it is and get an interest out of it and once you've kind of exhausted it then you're back having that conversation with you saying yeah. i want something different or yeah. i need to i need a different mood it's like if you wear the same clothes all the time people get bored of it don't they yeah um you know obviously they're going to check you wash them as well but you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah, you, you need to keep it moving and that sounds cliche so yeah no yeah. i agree so moving on to the last part of our video james has very kindly picked out from our stock some of his favorite pieces he had no idea of the prices and i think he's done himself a good <laughs> he's done himself <laughs> a good Good job, Please. yeah, exactly. So he's gone for some pretty, uh, some pretty good pieces here. So let's have a chat through them. So we'll start with the one that you went mad for about your car. So yeah. for anyone that doesn't follow James, he has a new shape Range Rover yeah. with the same color Defender. interior. Defender's oh, Defender, blue, sorry. Yeah. So please uh, uh, talk us through why this one jumped so, out. Yeah, you. look, listen. I mean, price tag aside, <laughs> he didn't know at the start. I had a feeling looking at <laughs> it that you know if it was anything like the car they charge you know you charge more when it's a one off. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no. The, the Tiffany vibe it gave off. I've got Tiffany blue seats in the Defender, which I was a little bit not sure of at the time. It was I thought, a brave move. This off it was a brave move. It was summer. I was getting a bit ahead of myself. I was thinking, I've got a nice tan. This could work. <laughs> then my girlfriend loved the Defender as well, and I was thinking, right. Let's get it as a joint car because people slate me for the Tiffany Blue. I say, it's okay, it says. <laughs> she wanted the Tiffany Blue. So, yeah, but I, I could see that sitting nicely in the Defender, oh, yeah, okay, mean, with so 17 bad. security guards. Criminally but, yeah, well. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. I'm also very conscious that it's a probably about six of my defenders <laughs> on my wrist. Yeah. But that doesn't bother me. So, no, the Tiffany Blue, and obviously we've, we've talked it length, rose gold, Tiffany yeah. Blue, put the two together. Yeah. Thanks for coming. And also, 
I'm not going to see another person wearing that. No, you're not, because it is a piece unique. This is an Artisans de Genève. It's called the Le Commerce Tiffany, and it is a one-of-one one creation. It's so special, and it was hilarious that when I pulled all the watches out, you just went, yep. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you're, you're a man of good taste. What can I say? Um, and then uh, next, uh, please, uh, th th this is something that jumped out at you. So you really like these dials, don't you? Yeah, and I was going to say, as, as a kid growing up, when I looked at the Daytona Rage and when I looked at Rolex, even then before I banged on about rose gold, I always wanted a rose gold, either with the Ever Rose dial or sub dials or the chocolate dial, Ever Rose. But I yeah. always was pulled in by the rose gold Daytona. And when I saw that in there with the sub dials rose, I was just like, Do you know what? Yeah, yeah, actually. And not necessarily, I know that's obviously an extremely rare and expensive piece, but I'm kind of taking myself back to what I've always liked consistently from the start of my kind of watch enjoying journey through to was currently yeah. sat here now. Yeah. And that just jumped out at me. I was like, you can't beat that. Like, so I think it just looks sick. Yeah. This is a killer watch. And I was so happy when you chose it because this just goes to show that James is a man of passion because it was sitting right next to the new reference. So this is the original. This is the 116504. Five, and it was sitting there right next to the 126505. Um, and because it had the row subdials, you yeah, just exactly, grabbed yeah. it. And I just think, you know, that really shows that it's just a case of what you love. Yeah. You actually chose something you love there. So uh, uh, bravo to you. And what a beautiful watch. I mean, it's a killer. Yeah. Yeah. Timeless. I love the strap as well. That's the thing is full rows. It's, yeah. like, it's really, yeah, really yeah. I know you like, obviously. In the winter, I'm not sure I'd wear it. Exactly. exactly. Oyster Flex is, is the, going to yeah, be the slaps. sports yeah. watch, isn't it? Um, okay, cool. And then also we've picked something. We may as well stay on Daytona. Yeah. So uh, why did you pick this one? What did you like about it? I must say you educated me more on the yeah. dial. Um, like I say, my brother's the, the expert on watches. I'm a little bit more on the, the, the basic knowledge, but you educated me. I knew obviously it's the platinum one. The, sub, the, the color of the dial jumped at me as well. Yeah. I like the fact that it's got that level of prestige. If you know, you know. That's my favorite thing about this watch. It's to, to Tom, Dick and Harry, it's stainless. Yeah. Um, to a watch thief, it's definitely not stainless. <laughs> um, and then obviously you educated me further on the dial in terms of the, the reference to like the different markers and what have you. So I now appreciate it's even more yeah. over and above what I knew it to be yeah. as the day that's platinum. But mate, I just think it that colour works in the winter, works in the summer. It's understatedly overstated, which yeah. I love. Yeah. Um, and yeah, again, not going to walk into many people, especially with this model, but wearing it. And no. I like that. So that's another thing. So basically, Take it, I'm do, stressed. Yeah, please. I'm sweating, so I'm it. doing what I do for a living, yep. you know, basically is the watches that kind of are understated that do drive me wild because obviously when I first initially got into the industry I was just obsessed with like singing dancing like as much gems as I could get yeah. and like make it as mad as possible tourbillons all that kind of stuff yeah. but now I've started to realize that actually the little ones that kind of look like more. something less but yeah. they are something special and these are real conversation pieces as well and I assume like me you can't even tell what the hour markers are no, 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 or no. care though no no and that's the I thing so, you know enough. it's a Hindu Arabic dial it's so special you have to be a top spender in the uae to get a, get a watch like this and i just think that actually from across the room it can just be a daytona it yeah. doesn't necessarily need to uh sort of shout anything no, else. Exactly, yeah. and then as you get closer you're like oh my yeah. goodness oh like, boy it's the one <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah and also as well a lovely thing that i like about this watch is that the uh, ceramic bezel isn't black yeah it's, it's actually awesome. chestnut brown so when you actually get it in the light it goes this like really bright brown which yeah. again would tick the box uh for your car that you were mentioning earlier. Yep. Uh, and then last but certainly not least, you had your eye on this Nautilus. So you said you hadn't, hadn't worn much Patek. Or no, really I had it, no. It. And I saw, the, I saw the, the Pateks on offer and then I saw the Nautilus and I thought, you know what? Again, put it in that bracket, understated. Yeah but something super unique. Yeah. I have to say, I think, I think you know, you've played yourself down in the sense of uh, of, of saying about with the watches and, and your knowledge, because yeah. forget the knowledge, right? Yeah. You've, you've walked in and you've picked four choices that I would easily have picked out for, yeah. to show you today. So yeah. um, you've picked some great stuff, man. Yes. Yeah. My so, brother will be proud of you. He'll, he'll definitely be proud oh, of you. Did, did yeah, man, let's get him. So <laughs> basically this last, but certainly not least, is the 3710. We mentioned it earlier in the video. I wore it to the Watch Pro event and it's the only Nautilus with a power reserve. So it's a just a really unique piece and you don't see many of them around and another cool thing about this is it's not eye-wateringly expensive so it's actually a similar price to any other nautilus yeah. it's just a, again if you know you know and the roman numerals set it off because the plane markers on a plane nautilus for me are a little bit boring yeah uh, and this one just yeah it's really cool
Yeah, no, it is. It's unreal. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you made some fantastic choices today, man. Congratulations to you. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. James is a legend. He came and did the interview, and we've had a ball, and man, Honestly, it means the world really to me. That. Thank, thank you, you so, much. so much. Thanks for letting me look at these pieces. It's an absolute pleasure. Cheers, buddy. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me here at Jardin du Mayfair for another amazing video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have. Please do hit subscribe. My tech team tell me that up to 80% of you aren't subscribed. Hit subscribe and I'll keep these videos coming fresh and hot every week. Thank you.